Hey, good morning. It's time for our e-blast. It's Tuesday. Praise God. It's good to take a few minutes with you, uh, bring you up to date on a couple of things. And plus, we're, just want to share a word that's on my heart today that the Lord's been uh, really just kind of spinning in my heart there for a couple of weeks now. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk to you about that in just a moment. But let me just start with this. Yes, we are still holding the marriage treat of things continue to intensify. We're believing they're not going to intensify, but the time's... Uh, that September 30th rolls around, well, we believe that uh, we'll be ready for that marriage retreat. Talk to them today, and things are still on with the hotel at the YO Resort uh, Hotel, and so you don't want to miss that up in Kerrville. I drove through there, uh, uh, I guess it was Friday afternoon, coming back from West Texas. Uh, it's been a, day, a couple of days out there with my brother, and uh, just, boy, things are really beautiful. I think I've had some rain, and so for this time of year, it's just really green. Uh, also, not only the marriage retreat, but Wednesday night services, Pastor Gary's preaching on the harmony of the gospel, or Brother Tim preaching on Revelation. Be sure and get out to church. Uh, there's plenty of room on Saturday nights to spread out, so there's plenty of room for social distancing if you need to do that, and uh, if you want, wear a mask. I know it's going to pose you at the door on any decision you personally make for your own health. But uh, I've been looking at uh, some things, like I say, for a couple of months here. It's been on my mind, maybe a month, but it really has been on my heart and mind. And it's about the context of a statement I heard the other day. Kathy and I were watching some old movie, and someone made the statement in this movie that said, you know, the opposite of, uh, of love is not hate. And what this caused me to think for a minute, because most of us think the opposite of love, and I got to, well, if it's not hate... The opposite of love must be indifference because you choose not to love. That means you choose not to care. You choose not to think about others or serve others or help other people or, or, or do anything like that. But the context that really starts stirring our hearts and mind in, in, in this particular movie that we watched, it went on to say something like this. The, the real opposite of love is fear. And man, that just really set home. You know, in Galatians it says, you know, I mean, the first John about talk about first, uh, the perfect love cast out all fear. And that, that scripture came to mind. And then I started thinking about all the things that, that fear breeds and all the things that love breeds and what happens. I mean, we are without any doubt whatsoever. We are living in an age of fear. It doesn't take much to figure that out. Everybody seems to be fearful about something. We're fearful about getting old. Afraid of being alone, afraid of not having enough money, afraid of failing, afraid of, of not measuring up, afraid of uh, someone not accepting us, afraid of, uh, of uh, accepting others, afraid of uh, bearing a burden, afraid of, uh, of getting old, afraid of getting mugged, afraid of getting COVID. Uh, I mean, you can just go on down the list and see all the things that come out of fear. It really does breed all those things that are anti-love against love. I mean, fear breeds uh, oppression, fear, fear breeds hate, fear breeds uh, prejudice, fear breeds stress, fear breeds anxiety. I mean, just think of that collective amount of stuff that comes out of a, the spirit of fear, and you understand very quickly why Satan loves to use fear. But understand, how do we as a Christian combat that in our life? We say, well, I'm just not going to be afraid. No, the answer the Bible tells us is that perfect love casts out all fear. In fact, there's a passage, I believe it's in Galatians 4 or 5, that says, that that our faith that our that our faith operates by love, in other words, because I love God, you know that I that faith comes out of that 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 that, that my faith is driven by my love for God and my love for Him and for His Word and for His people. So, <clears throat> think think for a moment with me on, on this because it's so important. Because if this truly is such as this uh, this age of, of constant presence of fear around our mind and our hearts and life. The way I'm going to deal with that is make sure that I'm right with the Lord and, and and loving God the way I'm supposed to do. Because it is certainly easy to fall prey to that spirit of fear and just get locked up and bound up by all the things that the, the culture that we're living in are, are constantly blasting at us through the through the media. You know, uh, Kathy and I uh, got a call from my daughter Cherish, and she was telling me how one of her daughters had got COVID, the youngest daughter, and. You know, and, and she was kind of whimpering in the background, and so we we talked with her to encourage her. You know, and I can I can't imagine being you know nine years old and and, and getting COVID, and, and she's got a mild dealings and and with it, but you know just hearing what you hear with the media and the world and the news and people talking, you all of a sudden I'm going to you know it's the end of the world. You can't let fear regulate your emotions. You can't let fear regulate your mind, and you can't let it regulate your relationships. What should regulate all those things? It's our love for God. It's our love for God. And the Bible says, you know, we love God because he first loved us. We thank God that Jesus Christ came, 
went to the cross for us, bore our sin and our death and our judgment. So I don't have to be afraid of God. I don't have to be afraid of condemnation. I don't have to be afraid of hell. I don't have to be afraid of death even, the greatest enemy of all for us. Uh, why? Because God's love. And you think about that today, that as a Christian, even if that thing you feared the most, all right, were to come upon you, God's love is still greater than all those things. Even Job made that statement in the book of Job about those things I fear the most have come upon me. Let's not let fear reside in our heart so that we're nursing those things, all right? Let's let the love of God abide in our heart. Let's let the love of God abide in our relationships that we just choose to love. That, 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 that I'm going to love folks no matter what happens, no matter what the reactions are. You're going to love anyway. Uh, I love in, in my, my relationships with my, my brothers in Christ, my own family, uh, the world around me, the lost world. I mean, we've, we've boiled it down in our church to, to our, our vision statement and our, the way we function as a church. We love God, love people, reach the world. But think about that. Out, out of that first deal about loving God, do I love God? And I, that's where I'd ask you to stop right here and what we're dealing with today is to encourage you and remind you to be sure that your heart is set on things above and that you're not loving yourself, your sin, your situation, the world, or anything else more than you love God. And the only way to confirm that is just continue to keep coming to God, enjoying the fellowship with Him, and allowing Him that as you love Him more and exercise and walk in His love, you know, that, that you're, you're experiencing freedom in your life. Otherwise, the Bible says you become that clanging symbol. You become an, an annoying force in other people's life because you haven't learned to walk in the spirit of love. Perfect love casts out all fear. What a great word I, I, from the word of God. Amen. So I'm going to encourage you today. What is you afraid of? Just introduce that thing to the love of God. And what will happen? Uh, it's kind of like when light meets darkness, the darkness runs out. When love meets fear, it always conquers it. So don't give in to those things. Keep your heart, your mind, sell things above and sell on the Lord Jesus Christ. God's got a glorious day for you this day, this week, this year. Let's walk in love and let's see him move the mountains in front of us because our faith even operates by our love. So love God with all your heart, mind, soul, body, and strength. I love you. I love what God's doing in our church. Let's keep, be faithful to him and let's don't let fear or the enemy enter in on any level in our hearts and lives and relationships. Let's keep trusting God together. God bless you. I'll see you Sunday.